Okay, what's going on, people? Brand new Night Wave has kicked in. A new eek. I shouldn't say a new Night Wave, a new eek of Night Wave stuff. As you can see, I am capped out at level 60 prestige and 10k out of 10k, so that's actually level 90, technically 91. But we've discussed this many a time. I. OCD will not allow me to just leave unfinished things sitting in front of my face. It's very frustrating. So, what we are going to do is hopefully kill this and this right now. With the quick, just none of these are going to count. No. So it's just going to be those two. Then. And that's fine. So we are going to do a how to, quote unquote, help Clem. So off to La Runda Relay we go. We're gonna pay a little visit to Davo, who 98% of the time has jack shit as a special deal, but every now and again has something preposterously good. I recall I got a peck from him. And it was like 15 plat for the heck. Look at that, and Aros sold out hella fast. That's actually a pretty good deal. About 75 off. Um, yeah, I got a heck for like 15 plat, something like that. This Clem need my help. Here we go. Help Clem retrieve the relic. We are off. Oh wow, I just saw some DE purple yelling at somebody. Probably yelling at somebody. It's yeah. rare you see D purple if they ain't yelling at somebody. So, tip number one on Clem missions. Since they do not mark Clem, and if you notice, you can look around. There is no. Uh, do this so you can see my cursor. But if you look around different areas here, there is no Clem HP bar. So. We are going to mark Clem. Now here's the really funny part, is that the icon for the glyph challenge is Clem in action glyph. Are you ready? Hey dreamers. The Clem in we action glyph. Ready to party. Yes, which was already my glyph long before the challenge was listed. Whoa. So, we're deploying Clement Action to complete the Clement Action Challenge of helping Clem with his mission. So, this is literally like a Clem Fiesta right now. In fact, in honor of his royal Clemness, I probably should have brought my Prisma Grack and Twin Grax just for the absolute fucks of it, because it would have just, you know, made the pseudo roleplay that much more fun. I totally forgot to kill shit on the way here. So, obviously, it's, you know, it's a 10 minute survival, which is no difficulty for us at all, especially at this level. Shouldn't be any difficult for you guys as well. But we'll give you the basic gist of how I kind of set it up. Keep things moving. Clamp. I think it's kind of hilarious that all he says is clamp. And then every now and again, when you're fighting Grenier, you can hear them scream clamp. That was a terrible Grenier voice impression, but you get the point. So you can hear the grack. Fucking love it. That, that was me trying to shoot at Clem, thinking he was actually a bad guy. Look at that. There's procs everywhere. This status shit is ridiculous. I mean, seriously. I remember back in the day, we used to, uh, you know, after, actually, 
so back when I played Star Wars Galaxies, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that MMO. Probably not, as at this point it's quite old. Or you may have heard it come in passing or something like that, but certainly likely not to have had any experience with it. It's actually the only MMO that I have ever played and maintained multiple pay-to-play accounts. So I actually kept three accounts for Star Wars Galaxies that were, you know, at that time, like, World of Warcraft, $15 a month, whatever account type shit. But the thing was, you could make two characters per account, and you could literally just, like, make crafting as one of your jobs. So I actually had, so I had one account that was, like, my Jedi and something else. I think maybe a bounty hunter. Then I had another account with a starship engineer and a weaponsmith. And then another account with an armorsmith and a droid engineer. And I owned literally like 17 malls. Literally malls around the galaxy. And people would come to my shop and just buy shit all the time. It was amazing. You could literally play that game and do nothing but farm material, build top tier armor, and like be amazing at it. It was nuts. It was so cool. And uh, the PvP in it was insanely competitive. So that was really what uh, was the big area for me. Back in those days, uh, MMO PvP was a whole new ball game than the PvP we see nowadays. Um, I'm talking... Well, actually, I haven't played WoW Classic, the new released version of it, so I don't know if the PvP in WoW Classic functions like the old uh, PvP system did. If it does, then that's old school PvP. If it plays the same, then even fucking better. Um, it likely plays similar, just due to the talent tree and uh, the same loot and things like that. That was me trying to burn Clem's head again, by the way. Um, this entire story started with uh, when we... <laughs> so, I, uh, I, I had a multitude of guilds in Star Wars Galaxies, and of course, you know, PvP being one of them, almost all of my uh, clans, guilds, whatever, but at that time, in you know MMOs, RPGs, they were clans. In I mean, in there were guilds and Counter Strike and FPS crap like that. They were uh, uh, clans, and that was kind of like the big distinguisher to me. Hey, a Grenier Manic. Maybe we'll get a free Ash piece. Not like we need it, but hey. There he is. The upside of those is that A, they're always worth points. And it's also nice to rub it in people's faces. Cause like, they never get ash drops. And nobody ever thinks to run something like this, or a Kuba survival, or like a Ophelia survival, Uranus or something like that to get Manix. I mean, I, when I, when I farm Manix, I do the uh, Yursa Neptune, you know, six minute spawn timer. But that's my, you know, I have an Oberon that can do this with a fucking yawn. And that's about it. So it takes me about six minutes and six seconds to do the entire thing. <laughs> when the manic spawns at six, he basically gets melted, and then we get the hell out of there. It's pretty, pretty simple shit. Uh, unless you feel like staying for Rob C and want to do uh, Para. Anyway, back to finish my Star Wars Galaxy story, which is what started this whole story in my brain that's never actually gotten out of my brain was 
uh, an expression that we used to use in uh, Star Wars Galaxies PvP. I was dying a fire. D-I-A-F. And it was basically the equivalent of uh, another one that I still use, or used to, and used to use and still do to this day. Uh, because people are still sort of know it, I guess. People probably know Die in a Fire, but I think it's like me now or something. I think you get in trouble for saying that. Something about this politically correct bullshit, whatever the fuck it is. I'm like not allowed to say shit like that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but another one of my favorites is just GG, no re. As in good game, no rematch. You just got your ass kicked so terribly bad that you don't even deserve to get another shot with my team. You're just fucking terrible. GG, no re, homie. And leave the lobby. That one was originally inspired from the FPS days of like, we just wrecked you a bazillion to zero. GG, no re, we out. You're useless. Or when you, uh... I remember we had, uh, if you remember, actually we'll, we'll go back to old school OG classic World of Warcraft PvP. If you remember Alterac Valley, the, uh, 40 man PvP fiasco battlefield thing. I fucking loved that. It was so great. It was like actual war. It was like as close as we got to war anyway. Um, but when you, if you got that set up right, um, you would be able to literally pin the opposite faction in their spawn and they would never be able to get out of it. And you would just sit at their last base, just holding the entire thing while the clock ticks up. And we would literally stand there doing like slash dance and typing like GG no re, like you know, all kinds of crap like that. And of course they can't re it because they're horde and it turns it into like Kek schmack blah blah boo. You know, because they're undead and vice versa. And they're telling us to fuck off and undead, which is really funny because, you know, we all know each other because it's the PvP scene. Oh, you know, it's a not exactly large scenario back then. It was pretty, pretty tight, both sides. In fact, it was so tight that we used to set shit up on rotation to give people rank so that everybody got to earn the rank level that they wanted, we let people rotate to, uh... Because you could only have one at the top tier. I think it was, like, Grandmaster uh, per week, you know? And then that was the number one score. So we actually kept track of who was where on scores on the leaderboards and would alter our own play so that somebody else would get first that week and be able to pick up the rank 14 uh, rewards. Ah, I fell off a ledge! And then the next week we would rotate it to somebody else. And then we used to rotate uh, uh, the fellas on the horde side used to do the same thing. So we had a set rotation of how, well not set, but they would rotate their people we would rotate our people and basically split the battlegrounds as in certain occasions and roll like 5-0 in, in uh, the farm one and shit like that. The one where you had to capture the farms and hold them would roll like just straight spawn pin, roll 5-0, get all the points and then do the exact opposite for them so that the right person gets the right points to get the right rank. Straight hacks, like such manipulation. Anyway, that's how I got my... I, I only wanted the title of Lieutenant Commander. I got my uh, Black War Panther, which as a human mage, I was not able to get until Exalted with the Night Elves, and then I would have been able to get a regular Panther back then. But I got myself the Black War Panther, which back then was like, I fucking rule the world type shit. Because there was like maybe seven of them on the server, you know? 
there's slightly more than seven, but you get my point. Um, and there's also like 300 on 300 outdoor PvP battles at like uh, something crossing and whatnot. Yeah, that I don't know. That shit was dope. Anyway, I'm rambling on about PvP that doesn't even exist in this game that has no fucking PvP. It does, but it's shit. So, anyway, that's how to Clem. Basically, just like stand there, kill shit, and press four with Necros, and you win. I mean, we could have done the same thing with Korra, but whatever. Let's see if we wasted any Syndicate. Nope. Time to go buy a relic pack, though. Anytime I break 120, I go and buy a relic pack from the Syndicate to make sure that I don't end up wasting points. So on that note, I'm going to take off from the relay and end this video on the how to clem in action.